continuing in our devotionals during Holy Week. I'm reading this evening from Luke's chapter 22, beginning at verse 20, where Jesus is sharing a Passover meal with his disciples, and he's made the statement uh, with regards to the bread and the cup. He took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. And this is the point that I think our attention ought to come to for some consideration. In verse 23, they began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, it says, they began to say to him one by one, Surely not I. So the response of each of the disciples, I think, is an honest one. A recognition that with the statement being made that one of them is going to betray Jesus, each of them examines their own heart and wonders, could it be me? Under the right set of circumstances, would I be the one to betray Jesus? I think it's a fair question. I think it means that we're taking a, uh, an honest assessment of uh, where we are in our relationship with him. And any one of us, the scripture says, be careful for when you think you stand, lest you fall. Um, there's a, a quote that has been made pretty familiar over the ages coming out of church history. It's attributed to a preacher, John Bradford, back in 1555 when he was observing a convicted criminal who was making his way to the gallows, Bradford stated there, but for the grace of God, go I. Just the recognition that it is within us and in our nature to actually forsake Jesus Christ. We do it in little ways. Would we do it in a major way? Where is our hope? How might we be best assured that we wouldn't be guilty of betraying Jesus Christ? In uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, it says, Through Christ we have access by faith into this grace whereby we stand. Grace is the enabling power of God such that we might be able to stand at a point in time where we would be tempted to forsake Jesus Christ, where we would be tempted to yield to our own flesh, our own self-preservation, our own reputation, our own pride getting in the way of continuing to stand for Jesus Christ and be faithful followers. How is it that we can overcome the temptation? Well, I'll recite to you a scripture that held me in the place of standing firm at a time in my life where temptation was coming against me in a significant way. I was going through a particularly difficult time in my emotions. I really questioned my own ability just to maintain my clarity of mind and stay focused in my work and, and not let uh, guilt and condemnation overtake me. Um, I would find myself many times uh, during the workday having to get up from my desk and walk out of my office, move down the hallway, enter into the restroom, and just cry out to God. And how was it that I would cry out to God? I would hold on to a scripture that says that we could come before God's throne of mercy and grace in order to receive mercy and to find grace sufficient for the time of help. And I would literally stand there by myself, hands lifted up, eyes closed, and cry out to God, Oh God, you promised. You promised that I could come before your throne of mercy and grace. You said I could find mercy. And you promised that you would allow me to find grace sufficient for the time of need. Oh God, please measure out grace. Measure out your presence. Holy Spirit, come to me in a significant enough way that I can overcome this horrible feeling, these terrible thoughts, and, and continue through the day. Please, oh God, sustain me by your grace. So in this season, as we've 
come up to the time of approaching Good Friday and uh, seeing the disciples moving with Jesus toward God's predetermined plan for him, his having given his life for our salvation, saying to the disciples, one of you will forsake me. The disciples asking themselves, could it be I? And recognizing that apart from the grace of God, we might forsake him, but God measures out grace sufficient. Here's one other thought. He says later in the same section of scripture in uh, Luke twenty-two thirty-one, 31, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So here's a passage that's very encouraging to us, that at those points in times where we might be weakened to the point of sinning, we might be weakened to the point of disobeying, weakened to the place of betraying, rebelling, we can recognize not only will God measure our grace sufficient for our need, but in those moments that we have an advocate, one who stands on our behalf before the Father, interceding for us, praying that our faith would, uh, would stand the test. And though Satan would sift us, Jesus would be praying that our faith fail not. And this is a tremendous hope that we have recognized that if Christ be for us, who can be against us? Let's rejoice in this promise that while we recognize that we too could fall short of God's glory, we have this assurance that God will measure out grace sufficient for our need and that he will stand with us as one who intercedes on our behalf. Let's pray. We recognize in all honesty, Lord Jesus Christ, that we could forsake you. Under the right circumstances, our flesh weak, our resistance minimized, we could disobey, we could rebel, we could sin, we could forsake you. God, would you measure out grace in those times proportional to our need? Would you come to us in the presence of the Holy Spirit in such a way as to speak a word of hope, encouragement, to strengthen us, O oh God? And Jesus, would you remind us how you intercede on our behalf before the Father, that our faith would be strengthened? Oh God, we look to you while our flesh uh, will be weak. Our spirit is willing, and we're asking you, God, give us your grace to stand. We pray in the name and for the glory of Jesus. Amen. God's blessing.